And I believe we are live. Welcome, everybody, to our uh, Thursday Night Live uh, Old Gray Bricks show. Uh, glad you're joining us. Glad you have uh, chosen to spend one to two-ish hours with us talking nerd things and Lego things and all other things uh, all together. And so we have a quite a model crew here this evening. And uh, we'll go around the room talking about... Um, I'm talking about our, our subject tonight about photography, but also we're going to talk about what each and every one of us have got going on. So uh, let's go around the room. Let's start with uh, Meredith and, and Mrs. Steel Wheels. What y'all got going on? Y'all are muted. Muted, muted, muted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got everybody down here like going tonight. So. What's up, Brian? Hey. So not much has been going on. I had we had too much Ricky Bobby time last week, yeah. and that cut into the logo time. So, but I know is Moto here? Is Moto on that? Let me go with that. Hey, Moto was in the side chat for a little bit. So okay. Oh, I was gonna show him. I know Moto is a huge fan of the Friends crossover. So um, the shift is there. I just need to. Speaking of photography, I will take some pictures of her. This uh this weekend we'll we'll try to break out a decent uh backdrop, but she's all ready to go. Right there. Nice. See ya. Woo! Cool. It hooks up to the other thing, but Great. so yeah, we just need to take like some it. photos. We bought a backdrop. Well Natalie, oh, move come on, Nat. <laughs> we bought a backdrop, so I guess that's step one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Bron, uh, well, I see that, Bron. We we did have the echoes better. I don't know what, what happened, but we our echo dropped there. That's good. There's an echo, but we saw it. That's awesome. Go take a swing back through the let's see the ship one more time. On, let me get the let me get the kid out of the way. Yeah, out of the way, kid. Okay, there. So great. Wow. Ah, that is nice. so, so great. Oh, nice, All that the sales there, the extra sale he put on that dad. Yep, he did. He did the thing there. It needs a purple pirate. Uh, we have a few. It's all going to be mini dolls because it's a mini doll ship. Nice. So we got, we got a few pirates here. We're, uh, as I said, we're gonna we're gonna follow Rich Q, and uh, we have lots of extra friends hairs. Maybe we will cut some friend hairs and glue some pirate next to them. Cool. Maybe. They might have to change some there. So. That's all. We, still, we haven't done much more. Right? It's been a slow way two weeks. All right. Yeah, we still got a little echo back. Sorry about that. All right. But let me just uh, welcome those in the, in the chat. I got Brom, uh, Bricksmith, who's in the chat with us, is in there. Brick Studios, uh, Yvette B. Welcome. Uh, Jeff Van Winden, good to have you here. Moto is still in the chat. I'm hoping he's listening. Uh, Steve Fever is in there, and uh, Mr. Seamus is there. So uh, y'all make sure to like and subscribe and, you know, hit the bell, all those kind of things. Uh, yeah, we got a little feedback, so we'll, we'll figure out who's got that going on and work on it. Oh, there's Jay. Jay, man, how you doing? Good to see you here. Uh, Mr. Magnus, let's go to you. What is up in, in uh, Magnus's world? Hey, I am. Uh, I'm OK. There's no, there's nothing very, very new, but uh, at least not Lego wise. But uh, it's uh, Thursday, so that's almost the end of the week. That's good. That's right. Yeah. I have, I have, I have a trans. I could show you a transformer. I could show you other nerdy things, but I have no, I have no new Lego things to, to take up. Well, how how is the uh, the tower going? Um, tower tower is good. I mean, uh, let me see what I got here. Uh, I think it's actually in a similar situation to last time. It's sort of split in half. So like that's the inside of the tower from one side. And then uh, I think the one thing I've done that's new is I've, I, I've messed around with these interior uh, stairwells. Like this is a stairwell that will go inside the tower. Um, and uh, <clears throat> there's another one in here. Let's see if I can work this out. Cool. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so. Um, coming up, the idea originally was that. Let me show you this. Um, so this 
So originally there was a stairwell that was supposed to go all the way up to, to the from the bottom to the top in this tower here. And this is where this one kind of is. But once you get to the second half, it gets very narrow on the inside. And so I ended up uh, putting the, the, the stairwell to the higher levels in a different tower because there just isn't really space up here to, to have an interior stairwell. But um, yeah, it, um, I never thought of stairwells as being a difficult thing to build. And this is very basic, but um, it took me a while to, to figure it out. And then uh, here I am. Cool. So Magnus, do you think you'll ever like uh, put like uh, lights on the inside or something like that? Yes, someone was asking me about that. Who were they? Maybe it was on a GI Joe forum. I ended up buying um, a bunch of those little Lego lights, the uh, that are on like a two by three brick, and you kind of push okay. things inside and it lights up. All right. Yeah. Um, I think because it's modular and it comes apart. If I put in any anything in there that deals with, that has wires in it, that That'll be tricky if I'm trying to pull the thing apart. Right. So I'm currently looking at a situation where I have a bunch of individual lights. You know, I have one in a fireplace and one in a few other places, and I can just, when I want to show it off, I, I pull off the sides of the walls, and then I go in and I sort of turn the lights on individually. Okay. And then that's my current plan. That's cool. You need some flamey bowls that will, you know, the outside and all that kind of stuff, you know, up lighting and stuff. That would be awesome. So uh, just to show how evil, you know, the Cobra base is. So it's so you mean awesome. Like lights right. on the, you mean like lights on the outside of the board? Yeah, it's like like up lighting the outside. That would look cool. Yeah. It looks so cool. And braziers right. that, brazier type dishes that have uh, flames in them with light. Like yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be super cool. All right, Mr. Uh, how's it going, Hoser in the Great White North? What's up, y'all? How you doing, man? What's going on in your world? Good. Um, oh, I see my video quality is as stellar as always. I look like look like in Photoshop, you know, when you don't know how to use like that watercolor fil filter <laughs> or a huge Gaussian blur. <laughs> exactly. That was like his a, nickname in high school. <laughs> like I'm moving through time. So um, yeah, actually, um, what I'm doing um, Lego wise is actually I've got like a backlog of stuff that I've built and some of it I've taken some most of it I've taken uh, pic pictures of so all this is actually tying into our topic tonight and before I do a huge breakdown and resort so I can actually start building again some of them I, I'm looking at sort of taking new pictures using all my new jazz to try to you know make it look cool so um, but I took a little break from that now because um, I'm also as far as photography goes, sort of working on something else. And being uh, being uh, it's uh, October or whatever, I figure I should be done this by about November 2nd. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, anyway, this is, it's in the uh, Space Police kind of theme. So it's going to be like a quad walker. It's kind of hard to show, but it's basically going to be like a four-legged, Kind of thing like that. Mm. It's uh, it's gonna, it's got the space police two sort of like colors and all this kind of stuff. It's basically gonna be like a, a gecko ish uh, pickup truck. Nice for space police dudes. Oh, so, like a yeah. four legged walker thing. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's kind of it's not really it's not using any ball joints or anything. It's sort of using like old school stuff. I want to say because I'm keeping it old school, but really, my skills are just so ancient and crappy that yeah, this is all I do. <laughs> um, the, only, the only bricks I own. Yeah. So, but one other thing I'm doing with this, though, and this is kind of like a little test bed for that, is, um, and this is linking into what we're talking about later on, is I'm trying to sort of figure out a format for photographing and um, posting. With yeah. most stuff shifting to Instagram as it is, um, sort of the the idea is going to be there's the promo shot, which is going to be the one that's taken with a nice lighting and in situation and all that kind of stuff, uh, and then probably four individual clean shots, 
and then uh, probably one short bit video with it on a turntable. So my idea was that sort of everything that I build is going to involve those six elements um, because they're all well supported by in in Instagram. It's possible to do them on Flickr, and I'll still be uploading the Flickr just because it's a good dump. Um, and again, if you want to go to Facebook, you know, it can be available there. So, yeah, this is sort of a test, sort of, it's just something I want to try to do for everything. So take 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 my time. So when I build something in the past, like, you know, build, and go, oh, I got to take a picture, you got to get it out there. Try to be cool, try to take your time, try to make it look. Nice. That's a good point. That'll be good to bring up. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's cool. So uh, so you're not going to have the the half naked um, uh, maple leaf only wearing shots and dancing behind your mock on TikTok. I'm I'm guessing. So no, please, no, please. maybe please. for special occasions. And then if, if you look in the reflections, Chris, <laughs> that's where it stays. So. That's where the action is, right? Uh, oh, let's welcome uh, Dude Jude. Glad to have you here, Minifig Collector. How are you, Jeff? Uh, McElwee, good to have you in the side chat there. Uh, let's go to uh, Matt. Matt, uh, what's going on, man? I'm building a store set. Um, so I finished uh, from the Han Solo movie, the Star Wars set with the the cargo yep. hauler train thingy. I built that, finished that up night. And I also built, thank you, Dana, uh, for Dana gave me the hookup on the, um, the DO, the, you know, the, the shape that's sitting next to my BBA in my work office right now. So I beat, built DO and I built uh, the hauler from the solo movie. Um, that's pretty much it. I've been busy with other stuff, so I'm, I'm still putting away ball plug in my room right now. But uh, at some point, there'll be an open table, and I'll get back to building. But that's it. <laughs> well, uh, you're a little tronny tonight, but uh, skipping it out. But how is the uh, how is the cathedral coming? The Italian workers are still on strike. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, when they get that. The workers will come back to the construction site soon and we'll finish the dome. <laughs> when that labor dispute is over, let us know. So, <laughs> All right, Mr. Bricksmith, what is going hey, on? Hey, how you doing? How you moment him? Uh, I don't know. Uh, what have I been up to since last Thursday? I don't think I was here last Thursday. I've been working on the castle. I got some more sections of that. Nice. Got, you know, three of those. Um I'm sorting, still sorting bulk. I'm eating uh, pretzels, sorting bulk. Nope, there. Kicking and butt, then, sorting, sorting, eating pretzels. Kicking but, butt, sorting pretzels. You know. Yeah. And then uh, I made, I made, I made a mock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one is this is the biggest mock I've made so far on this scale. So there you go. Awesome. It's pineapple head. Nice. Yeah, Halloween, everybody. I got that. I, I love got it. that. I have one. Yeah. Well, got some in productions in the chat. Good to have you here. Uh, Brett's builds. Good to have you here. There's no catchy slogan. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. The 24th of October, uh, Saturday, Bricksmith and several other eight falls will be uh, communing in Noonan, Georgia uh, with food and uh, ABS and other good things. Please join us if you're if you're there. Uh, please drink the Kool-Aid and come on down. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. It seems like we are being raided by uh, Kathy Conlega who just had her oh. uh, live stream. So uh, Kyle O'Connor's here, Will Harper, Ingrid is here. Good to have you here. Thank y'all for coming. Can. You can do all that liking and subscribing and all that kind of stuff if you want to. I would appreciate it. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> uh, CC tied me up and made me come here. That's. <laughs> so wait, is there, is there is there no one who's gonna comment when you have Julian's real face and the cartoon face in the same shot and how absolutely hilarious that looks? What are you talking about? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> 
Hey, you do a number two. I'm going to do it. I can't tell them apart. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> if I had time, I would actually I would actually print that out and on cardstock and put little rubber bands around it so that everybody who's up on Saturday could all be a bricksmith. You know, costumes. that's a good idea. That, you know, that would be, be cool. Uh, also, at one point, someone, somebody, not me, made it a magnet, and we gave them out at Philly uh, Brick Fest in 2019. So that would be cool I, too. That was the thing. Uh, so if you got um, Clutch's A Fall T-shirt that Kevin's made, the the big sticker, yeah, you can put it underneath that on your refrigerator, and it looks like I'm wearing an outfit. <laughs> Who made the uh, caricature? Huh? Oh, you don't who know who that, that is? That, that is that Kevin, Kevin Hinkle style. I was going to say, you have to what? ask. I wasn't 100% sure. I was, maybe I was trying to feature and give a chance to praise Kevin Hinkle here. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe oh, I had no Hinkle idea. Reference, get your Hinkles out. Oh, Hinkle reference. Oh, Hinkle reference. Get me, 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 me. And for those of you just joining us, uh, getting your Hinkle stuff out is uh, has nothing to do with what you might think it is. Thank you, Cafe Con Lego, for coming over here. Uh, for you. Uh, so glad you're here. You. Uh, I, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought some folks. Lorraine Fox, uh, Brick Sloth. If I miss somebody, I'm so sorry. Doc Sampson is here. <laughs> <laughs> Who brought the pitchforks? You know, I don't know. This is the, the night is young. I think this is. I think this is the most people we've had in the chat in a while. This could be Chef T. Good, glad you have you here, Kevin. Uh, if you are not subscribed to Kevin Con Lego, you should be. She does a great job um, with her videos. She puts a lot of effort into it. Her live streams are great. She's a lot of fun. So uh, give her props. Give her a like or and. And everything, Mr. Rich, how you doing, man? Tell us what's going on in your world. Show us how empty the room is. Give us a pan. Wah, wah, wah. For those of you just joining us, if you've never been in our show before, we have sadly watched Rich uh, put his entire huge mondo, you know, since Lego was made, uh, Lego collection in storage for him to make a move soon. So you're seeing the last vestiges of his excellent room. Uh, and there's no Lego in it anymore, and we're all sad. So what's just up, Just pictures. Man? Just pictures on the lampshades. I'm, I'm still wondering when the new small parts room will be on Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm renting it for $300 a night and a Lego set. You have to bring one for uh, as, a, as a tribute. Wait, just pictures on the lampshade. Was that a Fleetwood Mac song? I, I don't know. That says... <laughs> That was John Denver. No. <laughs> John Denver, do you say? Uh, John Denver. Is he so right? Right? Uh, John Denver glasses are put away for a while. Yeah. We need those glasses again, man, because that was. It's <laughs> <laughs> a wrong man. You gotta wait till my hair grows out just a little bit more. There you go. It's it's going. It's going. So uh, more stuff over to the storage. Uh, finding Lego in places we didn't think that we would find Lego. Uh, the house fixed up so that we can sell it. Uh, prepping for uh, an estate sale where the estate salesman company has bailed on us, supposed presumably because they won't answer the phone or call us back. So that sucks. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. So, are, how, what percentage of your Lego is gone? All of it? 100%? Uh, 99.998. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. We took, we took, the, we cleaned out the kids' Lego, uh, the kids' room. Uh, the grandchildren come to visit with us, or had come to visit with us a lot. And of course, they have Lego, and we had Lego in there for them. The stuff we bought over the years. And today, it got wrapped up and taken to the storage facility, too. So, I can't even play with. The grandkids of Lego, gone. Mm. Can John Denver give us a song? <laughs> kind of song you want? Uh, maybe not. Moving on. Mr. Mark Sandlin, how you doing today, man? Hey, we, 
We have a new dog, and she's over there uh, attacking small paw. Oh, wait, give us the cam, man. Switch the cam. Let's see it. Oh, okay. Uh, you got to give me a second. I have to. It's a. Uh... All right. Hang on a second. I had a bunch of Lego, a Lego channel? in my hand. Chris ruined it. I did. All right. Here we go. Small Paul cam. Small Paul and doggy cam. Man, I think she's grown since last show. Yeah, she has. <laughs> yeah, she loves Paul. Yeah, there is something else going on. You might want to switch away. That's definitely not PG. This gentleman just became the best Lego <laughs> Well, you know what? If Doc Sampson caught that, I don't want to be on his shows. <laughs> a little Mississippi leg hound. Anyway. This show, this show is going to be marked not soup, not safe for small dogs on YouTube. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I didn't have it ready. I didn't know I needed it for your big cam, but but uh, let me just go ahead and uh, put up the disclaimer here. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> when Sunny gets going, it's just best to let her finish. <laughs> I want to. I want to know what part of that makes Chris think that was PG thirteen. <laughs> what you watching, Chris? <laughs> oh, me. Animal Kingdom on the uh, internet. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mutual. Oh, Jim Fowler, where are you? <laughs> Marlon Perkins, rolling your grave. We're, we're not going to get small dog cam. That's not appropriate. <laughs> I'm gaining viewers. Keep it up. No. Uh, I can't unsee that. Yeah. See, for first time viewers, this is the kind of content you can count on on our show. <laughs> okay, you know, this is not unusual content for the show. For those of you joining us, it is. Uh... <laughs> Meanwhile, in Canada, the <laughs> stud Sidious was not paying attention. He was just looking at the background of the shots. <laughs> oh, what the cars are saying? Never mind the animal act. How are you possibly going to tell? <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, so if you want to talk Lego, you can, well, but. Um, <laughs> You're never going to top that. Has the dog play reached its conclusion? <laughs> Lord. Ah. Yeah, if, Paul, if he will get up out of the floor. <laughs> it's, it's for the, just everybody, it is a girl dog, I'm just saying. So. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> is that supposed to make it better, Chris? Well, I don't know. <laughs> it's still it's interspecies. Easy. Wait, is this is this the uncomfortable laugh or the real laugh of, of mine? I can't. I don't this know is the, the real laugh. This is the real uncomfortable laugh. <laughs> the uncomfortable laugh is more like ha ha ha. ha. Uh, is more. Hey, he's paying attention to your pecs than the dog. You know, doing whatever it's doing in the floor. So. <laughs> wait, wait, did you have a yeah, dog? My space. <laughs> Um, if you would like a shirt of your own, you can go to T Public and search for Fleebnork, and I have this shirt available on there. <laughs> um, so I was working on a um, a new bot, which is there. Better like um, he's based on the old solar power transporter, so I've got his power generation backpack. Heck yeah. We yeah. Takes the inspiration from that. Um, and I was working on this sort of power cable that was going to come around to his hand, and I'm trying to work on a little... This is supposed to be like a fueling uh, I don't know, thing. So. Probe. Probe. Sure. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> Fueling probe. <clears throat> right. So 
You know that's a gun. That's not a even though the thing, uh, this big thing that hangs off the back that looks like the solar power transporter, it's causing uh, balance issues, and the bot wants to fall over backwards. So I don't know if that's going to stay on there. Uh, Perhaps a. Uh, I mean, have you ever tried thing. to carry like a thing that's like, your back? You might have balance issues too. So yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm still working on it. So if it's solar power, is there no transport during the dark? <laughs> Mark, if, if you need to mute and go mitigate that, we'll come back to you. <laughs> well, it's just that he's like, you know, kids get wound up and it just gets louder and louder and louder. And <laughs> I, I had to use the dad voice enough. So. All that a Thursday, sir. All right. So, yeah, anyway. <laughs> I'm trying to build with all of that chaos going on. <laughs> it looks awesome. It looks really cool. Yeah, yeah, no, that's really cool. And by the way, Mark, you got uh, Sunny is is your new dog. She's sweet dog, and you got her from uh, Rescue uh, Pound. Yeah, is that right. I had her from the Douglas County Animal Shelter, which is not relevant to anybody. Uh, I don't think outside of Douglas. <laughs> even those of you who are local don't live in Douglas County. So. Um, <laughs> But uh, adopt a dog. Doggies need homes. Heck yeah. yeah. Doggies are awesome, and she's awesome doggy. All right. Mr. Trouble Bruin, uh, what's going on, Dana? What's up in your world today? So it's been a lot of uh, breaking down sets. Um, wait, wait. Where's your cat, and what is it doing to other humans in your house right now? Uh, thankfully, all three of them are probably napping at this point in okay. time. Okay, good, so good deal. Fine. I actually closed the door and uh, and 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 critter free at the moment. So uh, <laughs> having after I think if you were if those of you who were actually on during the pre-show, you might have seen one of my cats trying to eat my dinner as it was sitting on the table next to me. Yeah. So yeah, uh, <laughs> always entertaining to have pets around the house, especially when it involves <laughs> Lego. So side note, though, it's amazing how many Lego enthusiasts have pets. So th th I don't know if they're like a connection. Uh, and then I've actually experienced that there are more cat Lego owners than dog Lego owners. Not, not, not don't hold me to that. I don't believe that for one second, don't sir. Hold to that. Go cats. Don't hold me, hold me to that. But just as a as a generic, I've seen. Uh, I know that there's a there's a Facebook group called uh, Legos with Pets, and I always just see tons of cats with Lego versus dog with Lego. So it doesn't mean anything but the fact that cats are cool. So. Um, as far as Lego going this week, like I said, yeah, taking the stuff apart, putting some stuff in storage, uh, working on some uh, some picture stuff, which goes right along with tonight's episode or uh, theme that we'll talk about here later. I did, however, and as I talked about on Monday, I opened up the uh, the, Bo the Boba Fett brickhead or not brickhead, the uh, the bust. So I did I did finish building that, which I gotta say it's pretty cool. I was really pleasantly surprised with the build. The one main gripe I have is these this this this, this little space here mm -hmm. along the sides of the T visor. If they had done a little better job with that, I think I wouldn't have a whole lot to complain about. And I wish that they had gone ahead and oh wait, they did. They made it so the visor can come down or the nice. finder can come down. So very cool. And I will say that it's going to look really snazzy next to the uh, the stormtrooper yeah. helmet. And now I'm feeling like maybe I do need to go ahead and get the uh, the tie pilot helmet from Target, so that may happen, I guess. Um, pretty snazzy. Get them all. Yeah, gotta get them all. Gotta get them all. Please uh, take my money. The one cool thing about the, the Boba Fett helmet, uh, and as, as I hooked up a couple of the other guys with a few, I found them at Walmart for twenty two bucks a piece on clearance. How that happened before Christmas? I mean, these have been out for maybe like. Three, four months. So somebody definitely made a uh, an error in their uh, their skews or something like that. So if uh, you get lucky out there and find some on clearance bill, that's the way to go. Yep, twenty two bucks. Yeah, you did. Gotta dig that. Gotta dig that. Um. Oh, and then I did. I was going through some stuff, and as I'm kind of cleaning stuff, I found this little guy, and I was really excited to find him. Huh. <laughs> little space Batman. And yeah, I, somebody this helmet, this helmet somebody somebody did uh, like, like the whole a bunch of colors of Batman in our group, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I I've, I've got a I've got a couple. 
Uh, but I hadn't, I hadn't found this one. I, could, I, I lost it in amongst stuff, and I was going through, and there was a poly bag full of, or not a poly bag, but a plastic bag full of other space figures. And I was like, oh, there he is. So mm. I found him. But Ow. Uh, okay. His blue, his little blue cowl in in blue, got blue color. Um, maybe I think it's in one set, which is kind of cool. I want to say two. Is it two? It might I be two. I say it's two, but don't quote me. I think it's like uh, a cheap Batman's uh, old school four plus Batman. It yeah. was. That's where I got mine from. Yeah, so, and the other one is from the really nice '69 uh, ah, Batman thing. Okay, that makes sense. That makes that's, sense. That's my, that's my that's my word. I don't know if it's true. I I, I would I would probably concur with that. I would okay. Agree. So, uh, cool stuff there. Um, other than that, we can go ahead and go to uh, this week's old great big side of the week if you want to, Chris. All right, here we go. All righty. I'm paying attention, boss. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Old Grey Brick set of the week, 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 and we've done the Galaxy Explorer long before, so I figured we couldn't leave out the middle child for too long, so we're, we're, we're talking about the middle child today, uh, also known as a.k.a. Two or nine twenty four dash one space cruiser. Uh, if you were in the European side of the world, or probably also in Canada, I would. Yes, yes, sir. Yep. So you guys, you guys got the weird numbering, and which was actually the number on the side of the ship, but yet you know we got stuck with the four eighty seven. So be as it may. So yeah. talking about some stats, classic space nineteen seventy eight. So that was the first year we got a whopping one hundred and seventy pieces. You got too many figures, one red, one white. Retail price, a whopping $10 back then. Oh, oh man. Oh, oh. 10, bucks? 10 bucks? That was seriously expensive. <laughs> it was expensive. I'll take uh, 10, please. Use price today is going to run you about $150, uh, plus or minus $50, depending on where or condition, whether it has the instructions or not, uh, yada, yada. Uh, if you can find one in the box, it's going to run you just shy of a grand. Uh, so if you do find one on a, in an estate sale that they're giving it for 20 bucks, grab that thing. Turn around and covet it and oh, it. open the box and watch people scream in, her in terror as you're opening up a vintage box. <laughs> what why is the set cool? Well, <laughs> first and foremost, it's the middle child spaceship, as we, we talked about it. It's uh, it's it's a little bigger than the one man ship and slightly smaller than Galaxy Explorer, so it fits right in there to make it a nice little trifecta of spaceships. Uh, classic color scheme all the way. Gotta love that. I think I recently saw a T-shirt. I think I want to get where I think it said uh, blue, light, uh, old, or light gray, something something, and then trans yellow. I I, I need to get that shirt because it just saved me. Oh, that's cool. I couldn't remember what the third part was. Uh, Better price point than the Galaxy Explorer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say that this set probably got picked up by a lot of kids uh, because uh, the, the Explorer was so much more expensive at that time. And so you probably justify to your parents to have gotten this one for you instead. Uh, and the last one, I don't have a fourth one, so we're just going back to the Space Cruiser. And I will switch cams to show. So, Chris, you can go ahead and switch this back to my... Display here of the Galaxy Explorer. Don't get out of the way. Um, so very much like the uh, the Galaxy Explorer, the back end opens up. Open up your your cargo bay so that you can see that you got your little uh, your little fork truck here. Go ahead and slide it in into the cargo bay and close it up. Uh, and of course, then the front half whoop, slide another front half opens up for your your pilot to sit in there, and also the uh, the white guy. He could also sit there and be as a co-pilot. Uh, they gave you a blaster, an old gray blaster that came along with this too, and a wrench. Um, and of course, you got your classic little yellow and black stripes on there. Notice it's only two versus the three that you got on the Galaxy Explorer. Um, classic landing gear. And you know, Chris, we were talking about the uh, Benny spaceship. That is what was missing off of Benny spaceship. Yeah, it is so easy to pack that on there. Uh, to make it even more so like the classical chips. Do better, Lego. Yeah, do better, Lego. So, 
And, and I feel very fortunate to have, have acquired two of these, uh, one that I parted out over uh, a couple couple of months, and I think I want to have to get a couple pieces from a good friend over in, in Finland or uh, in Denmark. And then the second one I happened to find inside a bulk buy um, that the whole bulk buy I paid for was less than what it probably would have cost me to get that that Galaxy, that, uh, that space cruiser. So that's awesome. Very pleased to have got two of those. So. Uh, one last thing before I forget, I, it, it's not an official unboxing, but uh, I don't think uh, Dave, Dave Cowdice is on tonight, but I will say that I got um, a little parcel from the uh, from the Great White North up in Canada, and uh, he did hook me up. He hooked me up with some uh, black corner panels oh, nice. nice, and a couple of uh, Space Police uh, panels. One by or two by one by two by four panels, so I can finish up uh, the last Space Police one set that I need to do to complete that theme. So I was very excited to get this on the uh, in the mail when I was walking upstairs to jump online. So I will have that set all finished up before next week. So sweet, uh, awesome. That's it, in my in my Lego world this week, Chris. And back to you in the studio. All right, that's awesome. That's awesome. Woo! All right, uh, I, let me. I officially have two of those myself. One I got at, in the day, and the other one I got in a park, in a set hall. Uh, it was mostly together, and that's the one I've had on display for about three or four years, and uh, it got packed. I think I'd, I'd, I'd actually go out on a limb and say that, in my opinion, that is probably the best Lego set of all time. Like, I think it, I, it's, I think it's, it really If it's not the best, it's a close second. <laughs> yeah, I think like for its time, what it does, wow. the engineering in it. Like I remember like looking at this, all those different things. Like even like when you see how the back closes in, it's not just a door. It's more like a cowling that comes over top of the floor, right? Yeah. It's brilliant, right? Like I'm looking at that like that is just it's so clever. And it's like and that even like the uh even the um top of the can canopy roof I remember being blow, blown away with how it leaves space behind it so it can pivot back in there. I'm just kind of yeah. like, like, yeah, like the, I just, I look at that, like that was, there's nostalgia. It was my first set, but I just remember after I built that thing, even after playing with Lay, Lay, Lego for years, it was a polar ship. Like it was just, and to this day, I, I, I look at you going through that. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I look at that. I want it today. Like I want it now. Right, so, go make go make four hundred thousand more of those and put them on yeah. sale for twenty five bucks. Yeah, and oh, yeah. I mean, if, 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 if there, I mean, I know everybody says the Galaxy Explorer is you know that one of those those Holy Grail sets that you want to get, but you know for its price point, it's like, oh. like you know this set is is so much superior to that set because it's more affor affordable, more attainable, even at that time. Uh, I mean, don't. Not not in the Galaxy Explorer, but if they were to do a re-release of a set, that one would be the one that they should do because it, 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 it's the right price point, and Lego would Lego would make a killing off of just doing that for fun. And like the yep. the whole philosophy of that size of set, what it does, how it do, do, uh, 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 does it, that's like, and that's to this day, I keep saying the Lego. Yeah, you make a brilliant hundred seventy dollars set. You make yeah. enough bad like. Ten dollar poly bag, you make a really crappy thirty dollar set. Sorry, man. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so, to your point. Very, very valid point. Totally very true. Valid point. Totally true. All right. Uh, let me just let me go ahead and uh, say what's up in my world, and we'll get on with what we got going on. I have made a bounty hunter ship. Oh, I didn't get my stuff. Bounty so here it is. Uh, this is the the Grizzly Vexu. Uh, Vexu is a uh, lizard thing in the Clone Wars. Sorry, my camera likes to bounce back and forth, but there it is, uh, right there. So this is my new ship. If you haven't seen it, oh, this camera's weird. There we go. So that's it. Ah, really cool. All right, good deal. So that's what's going on in our world, in my world, and uh, I am not going to get any build time this weekend. I have a wedding to go to, and you know, got to meet up with those guys from Florida. You know, so going to eat up all my days. So uh, we are talking about, and I'm actually going to be photographer taking pictures of this tomorrow. The subject of our show uh, is talking about uh, how to take good Lego pictures, how to. Uh, 
uh, present what you've done. Um, and probably what we need to start is, is it super important to you to make those pictures? Um, and what are you trying to accomplish through those pictures? If, you know, if you're making those, um, so, uh, you know, maybe we can talk about where you post your pictures. Main, I usually put stuff on Flickr. Now that Instagram is where everybody kind of seems to be hanging out, I throw a mo on there and uh, to Facebook, I guess, as well. Um, so where do you guys and gals post your pictures first, most, most often? Anyone? Well, for, for me, I try to balance as much as I can with Instagram and Flickr. Uh, if I'm building something when I have the opportunity to actually build something, I like to document progress on Instagram. That gives uh, people kind of an insight into what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and some of the special features I'm trying to build into, say, a building or some other uh, thing that I'm doing. Like I did uh, uh, back when life was sort of normal, I did a shipwreck island, which is basically the Black Seas Barracuda on, on rocks. And I had two of them in, a, in an acquisition. So I kind of like put them together and I got a boat hole out and I used it as a shelter in between the two out, uh, structures and uh, made it a real island area. It was just when the, the new set came out, Forbidden Island, that, that you could cool. turn into a Black Seas Barracuda. So I thought, well, I've got these two Forbidden Islands. I can do this. I can put them together and make something that uh, is contextually like that and kind of flush it out a bit. So I did a lot of uh, pictures on Instagram to kind of uh, show the progress and the evolution of uh, my thought process and trying to get these two forbidden island sets to kind of like merge with, with each other and, and, add, and add things. Uh, and then when I was all done with that, I took a bunch of pictures and put it up on Twitter as like a full set suite. Gotcha. Gotcha. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, mostly YouTube and YouTube is, is obviously where we are now and other places, but uh, posting stuff on YouTube is definitely, definitely a different vibe than we grew up in the adult fan community with um, big time, um, but yeah. uh, offers, actually, offers actually some new perspective on it. That's kind of my question. Like I know that Julian's mentioned before with YouTube and that's being like sort of the main, the main, venue to, to share stuff um but but how is that like is that basically doing like a video or is it doing stills and like a slideshow like what's um like, what i've me, never seen myself for, for me when, whenever i post it's raw uncut video because i'm lazy but you have some people that will uh do like a a a, a good picture montage uh, and possibly a review on it at the same time for the mocks. Um, YouTube is mostly, uh, but the live streaming is is what they like to do to when they build their their big stuff. Uh, the Star Wars guys really enjoy uh, when they're doing their big displays to live stream it and talk while they're while they're working. So like a walkthrough, or you mean like actually while they're building it, they're actually yeah while they're building like um, over on Twitch for myself. I have done a couple of uh, live streams where I'm just talking to people in the chat, but just building away on the castle. I haven't done it over on YouTube. I'm trying to diversify and get across all the platforms because why not? Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I yeah. think I think that uh, when I get to my new place and I start. <laughs> looking at creating my layout space, my tables and things like that, mm -hmm. putting stuff out, I may diversify more into like a YouTube live stream kind of thing. Uh, but that's that's a whole different animal, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, as, but as far as get pictures, you know, there's the building process that I'm documenting on Instagram, and then there's the final product that I'm kind of uh, documenting on Flickr with as much uh, uh, attention as I can to things in context, as opposed to, hey, this is a cool thing I built for this thing that I'm gonna show you later. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, good this night, Kyle like- Connor. Glad you joined us today uh, from across the pond over there. I know it's late for you guys. Um, yeah. So there's there's whole there's a there's a ton of content, and I'll I'll just go ahead and say the the video for the Sesame Street set that um, Beyond the Brick put out today um, uh, is excellent because it is talking about the set. Um, but they're just doing close up pan around and going and showing all the details and stuff. It was a five minute presentation of the new set and I saw everything I wanted to see and understood everything I wanted to see about the set. So it was done really, really well. It makes me think, Oh, maybe that's the way I'm going to do. I mean, they just rotated around, went to different things, set up really good shots. And then Bricks O'Brien, who has a good announcer voice and interest in, he did an excellent just rundown on it. Mixed it really well. It was a nice time. He's a solid package. dude. Just he, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it dialed in. It's yeah, yeah. He knows some what of he's us doing. can't always do the YouTube. Mm-hmm. Brian, Brian, Brian is the man. Bricks O'Brien. So that that was an interesting, you know. And we kind of talk about making videos versus photos, but it was a great way to present that set. Like I had it on at work. And I didn't want to spend 40 minutes going over, you know, how this is going to go. They got it done in in under five, and I saw everything. I mean, they yeah. zoomed in on everything. So that was a really good presentation to kind of to copy. And I I, I know that uh, I know that uh, that uh, Jane on uh, Jane Bricks, he's like diversified into something like that. So for, like for a review on a set, he'll have his normal gig review. And then he'll have a speed build, and then he'll have the full build. So you know, you kind of get to choose your flavor, right? Um, yeah. yeah, you know, that's that's cool. that's, that's kind of cool. That's the way to go. But that's the thing, though, is like, just like you know, you're saying, like you know, with this guy on, uh, is it beyond beyond the brick or be? Yeah, back? it's beyond the brick, but it's Bricks O'Brien. Bricks O'Brien is a video game Lego uh, aficionado, uh, and he works for Beyond the Brick, and uh, Top but then again, like you're saying, because it's so well produced, yeah, man, that's like that's equipment time, like that's, that's oh, yeah, cool thing, right? Yeah. Like it's huge, that's, yeah, that's what these boys do, that's what their yeah. job is, yeah, Produ- produce the uh, produce the video, right? And and that gets to equipment time and stuff. You have to, to do good photos to present your stuff, you yep. do have to have some of that, although you can get by with a really decent camera you know, on your phone, mine takes really good photos if I set it up right and, and everything. So the power is in that phone. I can remember, I want to say it back in the day when in like 2005, you had to have your, your, uh, your Casio quick shot or whatever that was yeah, 5.1 megapixel camera and hope it took pictures in the dark. And it, it was difficult to, to take good pictures. You know, you would want to back away and zoom in a little bit to make it, uh, kind of flesh out a little bit better with the with the lens. So today the cameras on our phone are are tons better. Although there are folks who have the full lens action going on with their cameras too. Um, and so what equipment? Let, let's go there. What equipment do you guys have to to take shots? Now I know Gil, you have a big setup because you're taking really cool um, action shots. We want to hear about that as well. But what do you guys generally take your photos with? So I'm taking them with my phone i'm sorry danny go ahead well i i wanted to i didn't really get to chime in about i was waiting to you, you changed no, time probably too quickly man don't, don't do that to danny he'll bleed <sighs> okay have the screen <laughs> in. No, you don't need to <laughs> uh but no i was i, I wanted to kind of you guys talk about a lot of things in there as far as instagram oh, versus Flickr. i saw some people mentioning some facebook stuff and then the youtube thing is is, is, a, is a really interesting concept and i want to look into that more now that i think about it yep. um because i think chris you talked about in the past where uh on lugnet or classicspace.com you would post things as you were doing them and okay. you really don't you don't get that kind of feel today if i'm not mistaken and and i always see, see most of the people on instagram that's where i tend to post most of my stuff because yep. Uh, it, yep. it, the audience is more narrow to what they're looking for. You're going to find them on a hashtag versus being in a group or, you know, the, you know, certain Facebook groups have gotten so, so big. You really can't even, I mean, you're, you're, you're constantly getting notifications that somebody uploaded something and it, 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 it's overwhelming. So that's what also makes me think about the YouTube portion of it. Uh, <laughs> <brick shelf. laughs> I do have a brick shelf, believe it or not. 
I do have yeah. a brick health count. I think I have like one photo on there. It was like forever ago. Um, but one of the reasons I like Instagram is that it's it's all photos and I can just scroll real quickly. <clears throat> and the interface is good where, you know, Flickr can be a little bit confusing or, you know, it's a little clunkier to try and navigate for things yeah. you just want to see. I never noticed. <laughs> it's a little clunky. Um, I can't stand the new Flickr where you have to wait five seconds before you can go to like the next photo, right? After, like three to four photos. Right. Yeah, or you're getting ads popping up. At least when an ad pops up on Instagram, it, you just can keep scrolling if you don't want to look at it. Or you know, I have my brother. You know, it, it's a little more tailored to what you're looking at. My the, the Instagram stuff. Yep. Um, but the other thing is, and what makes me question the YouTube thing is, I've got to dedicate myself to watching an entire video versus just I'm scrolling on my phone while I'm doing a number two and I can see what I want to see versus having to commit to watching a five minute video. Yeah. Oh, hey, uh, yo, it, it just and to address that, okay. <laughs> <laughs> to address the turd in the room, uh, here's, here's a fun fact. <laughs> and, and then, uh, TikTok YouTubers who are serious about what they're doing. Uh, have now started doing set reviews in 30 seconds. Now that's Do cool. Them. Now that's cool. And, and, and cool. I'm not doing them yet because I'm I'm a thirst trap. But whatever. And, and, and because I, <laughs> I have, I need somebody to get it. <laughs> I have tons of sets that I would like to be able to do that kind of thing. And 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 Jangris has has set the bar very high. And yeah. it's almost like I kind of looked through and I'm like, he's already done it. Why should I talk about sets when he's already done it? Mm -hmm. Right. And then he's done such a great job at it. And he has that smooth AM radio voice that, you know, yeah. brings people. Yeah. But I like the yeah. thought of set reviews under 30 seconds. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, a, I'm an old Dale Carnegie graduate to, you know, I've got a speech I got to do and it's under two minutes and boom, I'm out the door. Get it in, get them the information and move on. And that's really like where, where technology and, and social media is going to yeah. is the faster you can consume it and move on to the next thing, the better. We're now seeing, and I don't know if it, it, it is Reels on Instagram a TikTok thing? Or is it like uh, TikTok? Yeah, it is. More of yeah, it, 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 It's a tomato tomato kind of thing, you know. Uh, like TikTok, is, TikTok is video more more than pictures, more than, than video. Well, there's, but, re but Reels on Instagram is video. Is video. It's so a video it, with a 60 second live limit. And then if yeah. you want to go longer, you got to upload to IGTV. Right. So so there's that, that whole thing. So maybe, because I, I, I threw something up on a Reels by accident when I meant to post it in my, my, my story. And all of a sudden, I got a bunch of likes from it. And I was like, well, well, wait a minute. What's this? So it made me start thinking, well, maybe there is something to this doing small videos in that burst kind of content. So mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to look into that just from, from this kind of conversation. Well, let me just let me just well, let me let me just tell you what I know from being on this on on social media for as long as I have doing this crap. Uh, you have the voice and the face for it, so keep it. Well, up. I'm, I'm going to pick your. I'm actually got some things I want to talk to both you and Chris about on Saturday. Just to, I don't know nothing. Oh no, I'm looking for a sounding board. Looking I, I, I am back and smooch. Let's keep talking. <laughs> anyway, yeah. so, uh, I was I was going to talk about what I do. Uh, I've always used whatever phone that I've I've been using, uh, currently using, and uh, I did buy on Kickstarter a a tool for myself. Was uh, called. I'm going to do a plug. Sorry, Shutter Grip, where it has a little uh, Bluetooth uh, actuator for your camera to take a picture. So you're not even touching. You can set it up and not touch your camera again to take the picture. I have so one of those around here somewhere. It's all still. Yeah. If you say yeah, the word dongle, if you say the word dongle, we're all going to laugh in incessantly. I'm so. not going to say that. I'm going to say an actuator. So, so if I'm going to plug this into my computer, I have to use a dongle. <laughs> Where's the PG-13 screen? What? <laughs> no, no, no. That's an actual word, but yeah. It, yeah it's, it's, it, means, it means an attachment that does a thing. So one thing I want to just that mention. There. Here's uh, a dongle. It hangs. It just hangs there. Where's your floppy? It's, it's that thing back where it came for Oba, so help me. You, you plug your flop, you plug your dongle into your floppy. You know. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I can't work it under these conditions, Chris. I just can't do it. <laughs> Magnus, Magnus, were you saying something? I think we cut you off. Yeah, but before before we go on to more technology, uh, just briefly, because technology is not my uh, my strong suit. As Good night, as, as by my uh, communication device here. This is how I talk on the phone. <laughs> oh, the board. Oh, wow. But, wait, but wait, my wait, point wait. is, wait, wait. Again. Again. Yes. Yeah. Um, my three-year-old has one. Historian. Like, oh, Matrix is calling. <laughs> so, the historian um, prefers older methods. So what I wanted to say is when we talk about where to post things, it's interesting to hear about how people use different places to, po to post pictures of different things. But I also wanted to say how um, what I've been building for most of the past 10 years has been G.I. Joe Lego, which is really a niche, right? And oh, yeah. I've been posting on G.I. Joe fan sites as well as on Lego sites. And it's interesting to – it's a cool way to sort of uh, be a G.I. Joe fan without collecting new Hasbro G.I. Joe stuff and and be a lego fan at the same time and i also wanted to say like if if you build whatever you build don't think of just lego places as the places you can post at so if you right. build historical castles maybe find some, some medieval modeling group or or a historical group to uh post pictures at. don't don't assume that it's only lego people are going to be interested in in the lego models you build because if you build Models that's, whatever, that's, and that's find the true. whatever websites and post them there too. Yeah, that's that's very true. Uh, first, if I built steampunk, I'll try to push it up on some steampunk stuff like, uh, oh gosh, Tumblr. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then we're on Tumblr. Brick Smith's got a Tumblr. You're good. <laughs> or or Pinterest, or you know, some What's things like that. Yeah. There's it's also one of the most, one of the most enjoyable. One of the most enjoyable fan shop books that I purchased is a very niche book called The Lego Book of Presidential Assassination, <laughs> which literally recreates like 20 different presidential assassination attempts. And it has mini figs wow. and like the weapons and the scene. And it's hilarious to flip through. And I've actually I've actually shown this to my classes. I'm a teacher and I've been like, look. Here's someone who made a, a Lego representation of the first attempt to assassinate a president, and they love it. I mean, it's crazy. I need to see this. I, I don't know why we've never we've never yeah. talked about this. this is How come this never has come up at a lug meeting? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you, bring, you, you bring in your your book from when you you went to Australia to see some brick show, and but you don't bring that. Come on now. <laughs> it's the precious. I can't share it. I, <laughs> So, so we were talking about devices and yeah, uh, your phones, or if you've got a, you know, a big clunky DSLR. Uh, I, and it's funny thing is, is that I got a, D, I got this camera. It was one of those things because I took photography in high school, in high school and college. I, I learned how to, to, to develop my own film, whole nine yards. Um, loved it. Great, great hobby. Uh, but I never had. I always had to borrow cameras because I could never afford my own camera. And I got to a point in time where I was like, I want to start taking good pictures, so I want to get a good camera. And sure enough, as soon as I got this camera, which I think is like an 8 or 10 megapixel camera, the very following year, Apple came out with the iPhone 7, and it had 10 megapixels. Yeah. And I was like, what? And, Damn. Yeah. and it, also had, it also has better pre- Better pre software, right. better post production, yeah. better filtering. It. Like it's, yeah. Yeah, it's got yeah. everything. Just yeah. built into it, this is a, a far yeah. superior device than yeah. that job there, which takes amazing yeah. photos. Yeah. But I got to go through more regimen roll and hassle to download the photos to my computer. Um, you know, it, it, and then you've got to go through the whole regimen roll of how to take the picture. Because it's old school, you know, where you're looking at your shutter speed, your exposure, the whole nine yards, which if I was to take the time and fiddle with it, I'd probably wind up having to do less post work on a photo that I've taken. Yeah. But the fact that I can snap the shot with this and do 90% of it right on the phone, why would I bother with that? And now, nine times out of ten, or, well, ninety-five percent of the time, that's that also, on the back. And, and that also brings up a good point, though, because 
it's the big difference with depending on your equipment comes down to clarity versus effect, right? Yep. So if you're looking for clarity, you cannot beat that phone. You really can't. Yeah. Like if you're trying to zoom in on details. Yeah. For all the things we just mentioned, yeah. it's excellent, right? Uh, and it's it's fast. It's already in the device. You know, you can yeah. everything else. However, that is just for if you're looking at your lighting conditions, the space you're away from the subject matter. It's all off. If you're in those optimum ranges, fantastic, right? Yeah. Um, however, if you're looking for effect, or if you're looking for things that are outside of those ranges, your SLR can do way, way more, right? Good night, Rich. Um, and um, and the other thing is too is that night, Rich. And the other thing is is that um, like I said, for effect, right? Like if, if you're looking at something where you want to have a uh, depth of field, right? You want to have something where something's in focus up front, it's in fuzzy in the back. You want to be putting against something where you're putting it, uh, you're making something where the background is not necessarily Lego. You want it to be, you know, to look like a, like in front of a box, right? That kind of you need those manual settings in order to do all that stuff. So again, that's effect, right? You're going but, that but, and I, you know, I've kind of talked about this yeah. a little bit off of some other comments. All the pictures that you've seen me post on Facebook and Instagram of all the old classic sets. Yeah. They're all done on here. And they should be because they're all within that parameter, right? But, but, but if you notice, my backgrounds are fuzzed out. There, there is that depth because you can, and and, and it, it's kind of weird. And I, there are some different. I mean, you can get some other uh, non-native software to the phone to do some other stuff. But just even the native stuff, if you press and hold on the focal point of the the, the yeah. uh, what you're trying to take a photo of, it will auto focus and lock to there, and it will you'll get that depth that you're looking for from the background and fuzz things out to give that feel to it. And then you can even then start taking your finger once you've got that auto lock on there and slide up or slide down to increase or decrease your exposure, which again, eliminates that post-production that you need to do. So there are little tricks, but they're, they're not as intuitive or they're not right there on, on, on your knowledge base if you're used to using a, a regular shutter camera. And again, you you can do that. And like you know, I don't like this whole thing is more about you know this whole discussion tonight is more sort of like the forty thousand foot view. So I don't really get into the technical stuff. Well, oh, yeah. But all that kind of stuff, yeah. And I mean, the gap between phone and photographic equipment, it's like every day, right? Smaller, right. smaller, yeah, smaller. Absolutely, it's getting um, smaller, smaller. But the one thing that now you currently can do again, if you're looking for effect. All those things you're talking about work great with a stationary single light source that's saturating. So you're you've lit up your photo area, right? Right. But if you're looking at denial of light, which is what most of my stuff is, which is why I switched to the other kind of thing, mm -hmm. I need that because I need this. The whole room is dark except for the subject light and an explosion in the background right. or whatever, right? So you need to you need those settings to be able to do it because the phones. The phone desperately wants to take a good picture, right? right? So it's it's trying to find the balance of all those things. Now, some people are maestros with the new iPhone. They can literally almost do it all. Yeah, right? but it's tough. You know, it's it's you got to do some messing around with it. Um, but anyway, to try to bring this back to the larger discussion, um, the whole thing that I was kind of wondering about people, and this is something which came up way back in the day um, when people started to use an infinite background, you know, it's all white, right? You know, um, it's like everything's well lit and all that stuff. There started to be this shift, right? First on, on uh, brick shelf from then on to uh, flicker and that where the photo quality began to gain an importance over them, over the creation. Mm. And at one point, it seemed that the presentation started to pass it, 
that if you had someone who had something with shadows, with, you know, things are a little bit blurry or whatever, could be a brilliant build. But it wasn't getting the action that the clean presentation did. And people were starting to get ticked off, right? Because they're like, oh, man, it's just all about the white background now, right? Yeah. It's to really be a thing, right? And that's why, and like, but, you know, eventually everyone's skills sort of came up to a, to a level where, okay, everyone knows, you know, the basics of how to do it. But now I'm wondering if we're, again, we're hitting that level where it's not only how you present, it's where you present, right? Like, is it is it now more important that you're basically putting it on Instagram with static pictures plus a vid, vid, video? Is that what's going to give you the exposure, right? Is is that like is that the new next plateau? And if it is, do any of us care? You know, being old gray bricks, or are we just gonna go? Yeah, get off my porch. I'm just gonna build, and you know, gonna post at Yahoo, you know, rec groups and stuff, whatever, right? So, like, is it like, you know, what do you guys think? Like, do you got are you you want to keep up with the Joe and Joneses, or are you just gonna go no? Well, I, I, I think in, um, this kind of goes back to even what I build versus what I show or, 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 or take pictures of and, and post. It's what I want to do, what I want to see. If I get people who like it, cool. If, if, if I'm the only one and there's like six other people who are, who are enjoying it, okay, cool. I, I, I'm not going to lose any steam over it. But I do have to agree with you. There are people out there who are fishing for it, who are, you know, who are, are dare I say, addicted to the like mm-hmm. and are seeking that attention, whether it be uh, they're, they're, they got to be the first to post a new set. They got to be the first to post a new, a new build video. Um, you know, there's those people out there and they're going to be there regardless. But you know, the best thing that we can do, and I think that's one of the things that Chris has kind of made the foundation for this, this this show in general is kind of preaching the break and, you know, do what you like and, and, and post what you like. And if people like it, cool. And if they don't, yeah, oh, well, at least you're enjoying what you're doing. Right. Well, let me ask you a question. All right. This does. Have you seen mediocre builds with nice photos? get more attention than good builds with mediocre photos. Absolutely. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Both. Yep. So for me, what I've, what I've noticed on Instagram is if it's a professional picture, it will get, it'll blow up uh, on a mediocre, like, okay. Case in point, I, I took and reposted a Lego set, Legos picture. I got 230 something. I built, I built the set here with, Mediocre lighting, I get 100 likes. Yeah. And, and I feel like that's the way it is across the board. Uh, and, and whatever. I don't know. <laughs> well, no, I mean, and, and, and so, and, and Gil was talking about this, that I, I get lots of comments about my pictures that I post um, on Facebook groups about, wow, how new my pieces look, how bright white the whites look. And that's because I have decent. Now, now, I will not say it's the best lighting I could use. It, it, it's decent for the hobby that I'm doing. If I, I mean, I have friends of mine who have, you know, two thousand dollar light gear that I could do amazing things with. But that's not that's not what I need. But just doing a little investment for the right light and doing just a small tweak on some of my photos, boom, they pop. And, yeah. And, and people see that and they notice that. And because, I mean, sex sells. And the same thing with quality of picture. If it looks sexy, and I yeah. use that sometimes when I'm talking about photos or spaceships, I'm like, wow, that's that's a hot ship. That's sexy. It's going to yeah. get more exposure than a ship that's taken that looks just as cool, but the photo's not lit, lit well, and you yeah. lose the effect. Yeah, I, I'm not a. I, I know very little about photography. I've struggled to get up to a, a bare minimum level. But the one piece of advice I got that I've been able to implement as a as a fairly basic photographer is is to think about light. You know, 
and I cool. take pictures in my basement where there's very little natural light, and I, you know, I'm just starting. I got one of those light boxes, mm -hmm. kind of, buy, but it's not big enough for for a, more than anything like a medium sized mock. And I don't know, but like I think thinking if you if you're not yet thinking about light and shadow, that's uh, uh, it's worth putting a bit of time and thought into that. Yeah, yeah, and it's and this is actually when I was, I was thinking about it tonight, just what uh, what what Brahma noticed, uh, just said that uh, brothers brick, and that's what I was actually alluding to uh, in my first statement is that when they it first came out, you know, it was kind of this thing where you know if you were featured on there, it's kind of like all right, you've kind of made the cut, right? Um, but they had this sort of set of unofficial criteria. Um, and at one point, they even posted this sort of like, I want to say it's a tutorial, but it was a little more ugly than that, in a way, <laughs> kind of saying, feature, right? if, if, if you want to make it on here, here's how you post a clean photo, right? Um, and and that's, that's kind of, I think, when I think back to those days, that was sort of the... the, the, the the fire that started the whole march towards us. Well, as Jeff was pointing out, I mean, where do you want to spend your money? Do you want to spend it on your bricks or do you want to spend it on the gear to make the bricks look good for photos? Bricks. Yeah. Bricks. Bricks. Yeah. <laughs> Space. Uh, Castle. Space. And, now, and, all that and being said, all city. that being said, I don't care. It is not very expensive to light to, to do symbol lighting. All right, Mr. Sandlin, Mr. Sandlin, Mr. Sandlin has the floor. On that note, that's a perfect segue into um, I just took a shot and threw it on Instagram just precisely for what Dana was saying. Um, inexpensive, how to take a quick, clean shot. And this is not stellar or anything. Okay. I posted that just now. Earth. This is the the bot no, I was second. working on right now. So, <laughs> so basically, what I I have on my table here a sheet of uh, just plain white poster paper, and I curled it up against a box, and then just I got some lights here on my table. I pointed them at my bot there and just shot a photo with my camera. I did a little bit of light adjusting using just the built-in software on the camera and threw it on Instagram, just for an example for this topic right now, just to say, this is a quick shot using just some simple lights, um, just to kind of, you know, and there's a little more shadow in there around it and behind it than what I would prefer. But just as a, an example, um, you know, you get some decent light on there. You can see all the bricks, you can see all of the, you know, the stuff that's on there reasonably well so one of the simple things you can do is get just a nice white sheet of poster paper mm -hmm. and a couple of lights and put them on your build make sure that when you take your shot you know you got your phone you're just using your phone make sure you have some lights and put them on put them on what you're taking a photo of but they need to be on your side of what you're taking the photo of because yeah. i've seen too many things where people have taken a photo and the light is behind it and it's casting a, a shadow across it and you can't really see what's going on. Yeah. The light needs to be where your eyeballs are shining at the thing so that you get that light reflected back into your camera. Yeah. So those yeah. are just a couple of really simple just beginner tips. Basically, yeah, that, maybe my wife tells me I take really crappy photos, so I'll take a photo of something and she'll go, nope, and she'll take it. <laughs> and that, that's the one I post. Well, and, and there is something to that because uh, a lot of photographers stars I, I've met through my time and, and, and the people who take photos for a living. And, and one of the reasons I don't take one for a living is because I, I talked to somebody one time and they said, well, if you want to take pictures of what other people want you to take pictures of, that's how you make photos for a living. Yeah. <laughs> right. But the, like, the other common thing I got from talking to a lot of people who take photos uh, who are passionate about it is that uh, we have a spatial thing in our heads that we can see and conceptualize what the shot's going to look like. Uh, and that's just something that is in, it's intuitive to people. Some people do it. Some people don't. Julian, 
you, you got shafted on that DNA strand. That's so. all right. I got shafted <laughs> on everything but size. So it's cool. <laughs> but and it doesn't mean, but it doesn't mean that everybody can't do that. It just takes a little more time and a little practice. And you've got to take 50 shots yeah. to get that one that you really looks good. And some people aren't aren't uh, uh, patient enough to go through that process. And you even have the professionals, like like the guy, like some of the some of the photography groups that I'm in. The ratio is 100 to one. Yeah, mm. take 100 shots for the one that you want. Right? Yeah, and these and these are guys who are actually professional toy. Well, that standards are going to be a lot higher than like yours and mine are going to be, right? Well, you'd be surprised. I mean, yeah. you, you, I mean, the average person can look at something and go, "Eh," right off the bat. I mean, and and it, what it takes is for a professionals to to weed out that so that they get the largest percentage of people that aren't going. <laughs> now, going back to Mark's uh, to Mark's thing, though, and this is the other question: is that for years the only reason why, well, the main reason why I took pictures was to uh, record what I built because I knew I was going to take it apart one day. So I wanted a record, right? Just like if I ever wanted to build it again, if I needed to refer to something, I wanted something that I could look back to. Do you guys do you guys build more for presentation and sharing or more for visual record? Uh, I want I want the world to see Brick Smith and what Brick Smith stands for, and I don't care what level of quality I put out as long as it's good enough and a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> I so, ex exposure, exposure. Yeah, for me, yeah, for me, it's just simply. Uh, I'm doing a thing. Look at my pink castle, everybody. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, I told think, you guys I was a thirst trap, and I meant it. <laughs> well, you know, it, sometimes I find myself kind of going, well, I took a good enough picture, but then I really only care about, like, you guys seeing it and going, hey, that's pretty cool and everything. I, I'm not so sure I really care about internet points, but then when I put it on Instagram, I'm like, oh, that didn't get as many... Thing. So I mean I, I noticed, you know, I so and that that thank you for being honest with us, Chris. We appreciate I am. that. Uh, you know, Chris the, is a uh, first time. Uh, is, it, and I was kind of proud the 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 mock that got the most uh likes and looks and comments on Instagram this week was my kid's uh monster baby Yoda that he did. And I threw <laughs> it up there. Yeah. And of course that was quirky and fun, and it wasn't a great shot. It was a decent shot though. But it was it actually was posed in a way that made it a little interesting, just a close up on the teeth. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and so it got more it got a lot more buzz, which was just funny. Uh, in fact, it's right here. If you want to be disturbed, if you have not seen it, here it is there. So you actually did a scene where he built where he had this tongue going through the back of uh, the Mando's head because it was like a kill <laughs> and, and uh in um, Fortnite, or not Fortnite, but uh, Among Us, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm not putting that up there. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> it was funny though. <laughs> but so sometimes I will take time to take a few pictures and go, well, let's pick a good one to put up. Sometimes I just, I just want to take a couple of quick shots, throw it up on Flickr, and the people that I know matter. I'll throw a link to my friend and say, hey, check this out, and everything. Could I get more? interest in it by taking a better picture i'm pretty sure i can but there are times for me personally i'm like am i doing this for me am i doing it for the for the kudos and i want to uh, or the or the david cow i don't know do we want to do it for the kudos or do i want to do it just for me and if i had a couple high fives on it that's good so i i'm, I'm having a hard time striking that balance uh for me but also i'm also seeing especially if i'm throwing on instagram you got to throw a little polish on it to uh, to get people to pay attention to it. And you also got to run a good hashtag game, too. But anyway. oh, I like my hash game, hashtag game's on point. I don't need to go ahead and change that name because I'm, I'm waiting for a lug to put back into my hashtags. <laughs> no, but I don't want to put Dixie Lug because I know it's going to change. So. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we got to But I promise I'm bringing all the boys to the yard when Peach Lug is real. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, but anyway, I. I only take pictures to show you guys. Like literally, that's it. Like I snap a picture, I put it on my Facebook or my Instagram, but I 
I'll take a picture and I'll be like, oh, that's a horrible background. And I'll move it over two inches and be like, oh, that's good enough. And, uh, you know, like, or, I don't or have you put it on your table and you scrape the bricks from behind it and take the picture. <laughs> well, sometimes that's an, actual, that's an actually great background. Yeah. I leave, I leave mine in sometimes. Yeah. But, um, but I will say this, that, um, you know, I'm more of a modular building type guy. And there's a guy in England who does really good work. But when he photographs his modulars, he always takes them outdoors and sets them on a table so that there's a sky behind it and it's natural light. And it looks fantastic. And so I keep telling myself, one of these days, Matt, you need to take your builds out on the back deck and take it with mm -hmm. the lake behind it or the sky behind it. And you said he's on Instagram, yeah. Matt? You said he's on Instagram? Uh, I just know him on Facebook. He does oh, okay. a BT Modular uh, Facebook group. Okay. I was like, if you know on Instagram, I want you to tag me in the code because I, I like that stuff. I like and, that's, and, and what Chris was saying about, you know, your hashtag game. And this this is the thing I find that I struggle with is that if I want to share something, there's a lot of times like, you know, whether it's it, lately, it's been more non Lego stuff. Like I'll be emailing like, you know, Chris and Mark saying, hey, I've been working on this. You know, here you go. And it's it's just because like, you know, I just find that Instagram is more sort of um, you're like you're more like you're more like like pushing out to specific targets yeah. where the older style of of Flickr is more like a communal trough, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like everyone comes to serve themselves, but with the hashtag thing, you're sort of like you're just pushing right into people's, you know. Wheel out, correct, and like that's to me, it's kind of like you know, for certain things, like you know, for the Mythic Legions fantasy figure thing, I kind of have my hashtags that work. Most of them is because they're linked to the Facebook group, and you know, I go to all the people who like I'm interested in their feedback, and it works great. For the Lego thing, actually, I struggle with it just because it's not outside of this group. And if I'm building something 80s and 90s style, I know it's going to be pushed into the 80s and 90s Facebook group. But if I'm something outside those things, like I just I find that I don't get the reach that I that I may want. You know, not so much like again, I don't care about likes. Like like if I get something that's got like two million likes, I'm like, oh, okay, well, great. Give me a comment, man. And I mean, we've been talking yeah. for 25 years. <laughs> Tell me. If tell me it's great, whatever. Okay, that's nice. You know, and I'm not gonna lie, feels good. But sure. man, tell me what you think. Say, hey, this is cool, but did you ever think about yeah, that's what I want, baby, because that's mm -hmm. what's gonna help me, right? So then uh, 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 go ahead, Julian. They don't they're not uh, I don't I don't know, like for Instagram, they were like the the criticisms like what you're asking for like i know you're not asking for direct criticism but like there's a lot of people that won't don't won't do that because uh they just assume my my my, my double tap means i like it i'm moving on yeah yeah you know that, that requires a smaller audience to get that kind of intimacy between friends to say yeah. hey yeah. i like what you did or hey how about this um isn't I'm that like, what uh isn't that what yeah. Twitter's for Yes. Yes. <laughs> but yet on that 80s, 90s Facebook group, which got like 100 million people on it from oh, all yeah. over the it's planet. 16, 000, universe. Yeah, it's got 16,000 members. Yeah. But on that, I mean, I don't know any of these dudes outside of you you guys, but I get a lot of feed, feed, feedback. And it's good feed, feedback, right? It's And it's, you know, saying like, you know, try this or this, you know, or like, or the best feedback that I'd like is someone that says, hey, I built something kind of similar, and then they link it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, that's that's what I want to see, right? So it seems that, like, like Julie was saying, like, the like the, the Instagram thing, it's like a mach machine gun. Just like, you know, like, 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 yeah. gone. But with Facebook, maybe because Facebook is traditionally more of a PC, you know, or a desktop, laptop-oriented thing, maybe it's easier to type, you know, Maybe it's something easier to have on at work, honestly. So, you know, you can. So, 
Yeah. That kind of thing, right? I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> classic Julian, classic Julian. Uh, I just case in point, I have a 15 year old that ha daughter that has a Facebook. She has a Facebook so she can tell her grandparents that she's getting good grades. So yeah, that, that generation <laughs> that Instagram was made for is rapid fire. That's your TikTok. I need it in a minute. Let me go. Yeah. Facebook and YouTube are the older, the older class. Yeah. The, the, don't, don't, don't say AOL, but Chris has an AOL address still. That part. Um, yes, yes, I do. I, I get, listen, I, I am sure as the world in this group of age group with you guys, I promise I'm 42. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> I'm, but I, I giggle every time even a person my age has a yahoo.com. Uh, <laughs> 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 wait, wait, show us your phone again, Magnus. We want to see it. I could go in there. Oh my house. I'll be I've had this so, I've had so long that like the, the letters have worn off of the screen. So remember, like, what they are. This thing, this thing, uh, I've had this thing for, I don't know, five years at least. Yeah. And, um, so I wanted to just make two points. One is kind of a response to uh, Gil, and one is uh, another one. Uh, one in term, it's important for everyone to remember. I think everyone likes. Uh, attention and comments and likes and especially comments. It's also real important to like comment on other people's pictures. Mm. I remember someone who was saying how, you know, there was someone who was kind of complaining that no one was liking his pictures, and someone was like, you know, you've got to like other people's pictures. And if 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 you're if you're commenting on other people's pictures and giving other people attention, then you know it's kind of a give and take thing. Like it's easy to just focus on. You know, give me, I need attention. But like, give 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 other people pats on the backs and comments on their pictures too. Um, I'm yeah. gonna bring up one name, AC Pin. Oh, <laughs> oh, <dude. that> <laughs> the, the other thing I wanted to say uh, about pictures, and I'm not uh, an expert photographer, but one thing I think I have figured out that a lot of people have not figured out is um, angles. Mm. Yep. Depends yep. on what you're building, but like if you're taking pictures from lower down, closer to like where a minifig would be standing, it'll look bigger, it'll look taller, it'll look, you know, and, and uh, it's the same if you're at a big convention and, and you're looking down a main street at a town train display. If you get down to the level of a minifig or like where like a four year old peering over the table would be, then you get that picture of like the, the buildings going up. Um, yeah. So when you think of taking pictures, like get, think about your angles as well as just making your light and your tech just right, because that really, you know, that's that's important. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, I remember. I remember back in the day when we were presenting. I mean, it was the presentation, and it was like you had to get if you're making a spaceship, you have to get the front on shot. You got to get the side shot. You got to get the engine shot, and then you got to get the what is it, the three quarter view the Yep. The beauty shot and everything, and that just seems what Instagram wants. They just want the beauty shot or something interesting, and keep moving on. Um, uh, you know, I posted my starship that I the 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 ship for ship timber, and I got I got comments and stuff, and I put all the detailed pictures up to try to do that on Instagram. It was it was a little more difficult, and yes, you have to use your phone. You can't use your PC to upload to Instagram, which is annoying. No. Uh, there is, an, there, is me, a, but, there is a but, Google there's a Google there's a Google Chrome plugin that allows yeah. you to do it now from your PC, but it requires you being savvy enough to do that. Yeah, but then also I'm starting to upload a bunch of pictures and I've got like 16 shots showing all these details, and then Instagram is like, no, you can only put 10 or whatever the limit is. So well, maybe I'm just okay. The links up in the thing. Just here's the pictures. You know. Hopefully you get some bleed over. And I, I even posted it to Reddit. I haven't posted very often to Reddit. And that is like throwing your child to the wolves kind of stuff. Um, it was not bad, but you know, it, uh, that that's not, I'm, I'm probably not going to do that again, but you know, then I found myself, am I doing this for, for the vanity or am I doing this because it's for me? And that's where I, I've gotten, I've had points where I wanted it for the, where I, even though I didn't say I was, I wanted the 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 fake internet points and the attention and the whatever, but 
the reason I do this is for me and to hang out with y'all. So uh, no, I want to make up going with Chris. I want you, I want to know something. I want to know something. Okay, what do you want to know about the fake internet points, Chris? Yeah. Are you on social media to grow your brand? You have a brand. It's old gray bricks. You guys are here in a solid. You had you you brought a squad to the party, bro. <laughs> the rest of us had to start. Wait a minute. If you look at this squad I brought to the party, we're leaving. You know, at about nine o'clock and going to bed. So. Yeah, but you know what? That's your. Yeah, I've been building for like three hours. So speak for yourself. He's got me for like a three. Three hour long Bruce Springsteen live uh, CD, <laughs> and, and I'm gonna be building until midnight. <laughs> These guys are here to they got your back every week on this live stream media, some twice a week. Chris, are you like there's old gray bricks, there's pink bucket nation, I mean, there's Hooterville. I mean, are you, I think I think you're here. Wait, wait, not wait, not for credit, huh? On the worst Hooterville? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, but, I, but I think you're here um, to build a brand and also show – Not sh you guys have always been around, and you're not being represented here. And I think Chris decided to put his foot down and say, Old, Breaks, Old Gray Bricks is here. We've been rocking and rolling for 100 years. <laughs> we are the first A-fall. We'll <laughs> Back in the day. Yeah, and I don't have a problem with that. I'm just saying that you guys, you have a brand, you have a message, and you have a squad. Chris, you're here, Chris, you're here to party. You know? yeah. We're going to roll up. to. We're not rolling up in cars. We're in our wheelchairs rolling up to the party. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I don't know. I don't, but you still are pretty good, dude. dude. Most of this I, I'm going to disagree. I'm going to disagree with okay. Julian. So we were doing Zoom chats. And we're making fun of each other and showing each other what we're building. And Chris says, you know, other people would probably get a kick out of this. Like, we should share the joy because this is a pleasurable conversation and chat. Nobody said, let's build a brand of old cooters who build with Lego. <laughs> <laughs> that was never the strategy, you know. But it happened by, but it happened. It happened that, at time. And that it, it, what came first, the chicken or the egg? And yeah. I'm telling you, accidental ones are the ones that count. <laughs> the, well, the you know, I think, are the ones we didn't plan. Well, you know, the thing is, I would love for new fans to figure out the old builders still hang around. But a lot of it, I think, doing this is to wake up some old fans and reconnect with them. Let's get them, riled, let's get them, let's get them riled because you know what I want? What my... What, I want everybody to be my friend and I want everybody to ha be friends with each other. I want the old guys to know the new guys. I want you guys to tutelize them. <laughs> I, want, I want the new guys to be like, but have you ever thought about this? Yeah. I think, um, I, I think though, like the part that makes that sort of um, statement difficult, just in, in terms of this conversation, uh, and sort of the general topic we're talking about tonight is that when you start talking brands, like brand is a is a fairly recent word, um, particularly because of how of how it sort of can have a a cross platform um, uh, connotation to it. Yeah. Um, but I think what is difficult is that when you start talking brand, you automatically start. Uh, thinking of whatever is being discussed in that as being monetized, right? Which obviously, I know that's not your intention, but that's sort of the connotation that that brand has, right? And the, to Matthew's point, this, it's probably, it's not really so much brand as it is community. They have overlapping ideas, mm -hmm. things, um, because, you know, they're basically like a, a brand is, is, a, is a single concept that people respond to and rally around. Um, however, brand typically also, it's, again, it has that commerce side to it, right. where com where community is really it's it's a economic, right? Like there's no economic side to it at all. It's basically just you know, it's uh, it's social in entirely. But anyway, you know that's just you know, that's 
getting into the finer points of the word. I and, totally understand. And, and there, there is, there is, inter, here's, there is inner fighting among a falls that are going. This is about community. Okay. Yes, but would it be all right if I made a little money on the side? You, yeah. you sell Bricklink. Why can't I do this? Yeah, yeah. it's. <laughs> it's, 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 it's it's the seedy underbelly of the community. No. <laughs> <laughs> However, too, also to keep in mind, and I think this is an important point, it goes back to just what Chris was talking about, is that in the social world, even when you're talking about things having an intrinsic, in, intrinsic current, current currency associated with them, there's currency as in real currency, but then there's currency as in pop popularity. Yeah. So you can have some, someone who they're putting out a ton of content. They're off after the internet, you know, fake likes, but those fake likes to them are just as important as dollars in, in the pocket. Yeah, very much so. Absolutely. So, it's yeah. Uh, I know some people, I know some people who uh, absolutely uh, swear by the fact that they definitely need to win trophies at Lego shows. That's what they build for. And I'm like, at why don't you build for love and then maybe you'll win right but hey what do i know yeah. <laughs> no exactly get the old builder stuff to have them yeah to you and you know us us old guys when we hear brand or we hear you know whatever we we think of selling out you know our rock stars are not supposed to sell out even right. though they're you know now all the songs we listen to are hawking cars and you know, yeah. but you know, sold out gold, man. We don't want that to happen. One of the best skits from Saturday Night Live is sold out gold. If you ever yeah. back in the day, but yeah, so we bristle at that a little bit. And me, I, I don't want to be vain or you know s more self important than I should be. So but, you know, so I don't, you know, I, I I don't want that to be a thing. I would love it if you know hundreds of people watched our show. But I don't want it to be any different than what we're doing, just because we're just old farts hanging out like uncles on the back porch talking about. I, it. So. But here's the thing, Chris: you're I've bought into what what you are, or who you are, or what you brought to the table, because what you brought to the table is not here right now on YouTube. In my eyes, maybe I'm missing something, but I I'm pretty much looking at everything. That's cool. I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad there's there's a, a niche for us old guys with beards and I swear by and uh, all of us making appointments to see the proctologist soon, or you know, have a have something to share with the Lego community. Yeah, the big five zero. Yeah, snap the glove. So uh, also, also yeah, to if just, you, had, if you just, had like two hundred, two three hundred people uh, following this, uh, typing in comments faster than you had time to read it. You know, would that really be that would be exciting in new ways? But it would also, you know, I think if I if, if I, I I hang out with you all fairly frequently on YouTube, and I, I say things that are then on the internet forever until you take this down. And like, I think if we had like two thousand people watching me live, I'd I'd, I'd probably ha handle myself a little differently. You know, so there's there's pros and cons to to an audience. You know, and uh, I. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I mean, because we we had we had tens of people watching dogs, Mark's dog, you know, do things <laughs> earlier. <laughs> so you know, hey, we're 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 rocking it out. You have arrived. Yeah, I I think that's part of the, the what the the show is about, and or one of the cornerstones is that we we talk about what we're talking about, and you know, if as long as we keep it slightly PG thirteen, eh, we say what we say, I guess. You know. If, I, I don't. I personally don't see that changing. If if we had uh, ten viewers versus ten thousand viewers, or you know a million viewers, I think we'd still still feel that same way because that's what we started out with, and that's what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah. To a degree, to a degree, I will say that the <laughs> from experience. Yeah, because I've got I've got that, I got I got fourteen hundred uh, subscribers. So suck it. Uh, <laughs> Change his name to, to Pink Bucket Bragging. That's right, <laughs> At bragging. Um, it there it is. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I see what you did there, Chris. Uh, <laughs> it it definitely changes to some degree uh, for the host. Uh, 
when 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 it escalates because how you portray your brand or your ha- your your end of the community it it because when I started live streaming I was a goofball da, 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 da. I still am wild and crazy kind of guy but when it comes to mine I settle it down and make sure I'm in control I didn't used to care about control of my own show right <laughs> no, well, I'm, yeah. all I'm yes. gonna say is I have a day job and I'm doing this for fun. This is not for me. It's yeah. not a. I'm. Not, I don't care about a brand. I don't care about becoming famous. I want to impress my friends with a build. That's 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 as high as it gets. If yeah. I build something and my friends say that's good, that's it. That's all I'm looking for. Personally, I mean, other people could have other agendas, but I have a day job where I compete to get published or be the best teacher or all that. I don't want pressure at Lego. I want to have fun. Mm-hmm. That's certain. And, yeah, and I've, I've been there, done that, and felt the pressure and about gave it up. So seeking that out is something, I, you know, I, I just have to guard against, I guess. But back to taking the picture. The picture is the way we communicate to everybody else because they can't come in our Lego room and see it. So whatever we lens, we throw it through to throw it out to the internet. Um, that should be the secondary thing, not the tail wagging the dog, I guess. And when we take it, but there is benefit to taking that a decent shot, a good shot of what you're doing to communicate it. Well, and I think um, we've, we've learned some good tricks. There's, if you missed it, in the uh, chat, and when this goes live, I'll make sure it's in the notes or the whatever you call them underneath the description. Uh, Cosmodo has a really good uh, tutorial about his setup and taking photos, and he does a great job of that. So that'll be some practical uh, information there. So it's kind of where we're going, but you know, if you're going to take a shot, give it a little more effort to make it good. What are we going to say, Gil? I'm just going to say too, and also if if the photography part part of it is your enjoy joy enjoyment, like if that's part of it that you like, so like that's what do it, like you know, spend the time, you know, make it rock, like that. And that's what I do. I mean, that's I've gathered all my nerdly hot hobbies. The central hub is the photography part. Right, that's where they all meet. So for me, it's great because. I've been flailing for years of finds that I've found, and now it just seems like I've got something that pulls it all together. So if you enjoy that, like all the stuff that Dane Dane is doing, like whether it's the static shots or whether it's, you know, um, taking like some uh, um, frame action, you know, what do they call them? Still, still frame, you know, the animated things, right? Uh, 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 motion cap. Or, um, now you got me losing my mind. Oh, uh, this is. All right, it's it's getting close to nine o'clock. We're all in to go to bed. I need my pills. Stop. I need Stop my pills. Where'd you get these pills, though? But yeah, whether it's coming, that's you know, if you're having fun with it, man, just go, just go do it. I, I, I will say one little thing on top of that, and because uh, there are a lot of great Instagram accounts out there that their main thing is photographing great, amazing shots. I mean. It's not even that their background is Lego. I mean, it could be just, you know, an action explosion of sand and sand troopers and and, and, and little gunfire at it. And that's what they do. And they do it fantastic. And I love those, which is a complete opposite of guys who are just building mocks. Yep. And, and they may do a, a good shot or a bad shot, but they'll do this amazing mock. And I'm like, oh, I got to screenshot that because I want to steal that idea because that's cool. Yeah. They're both getting just as much exposure and just as much uh, attention, but they're meeting different um, appetites. And, and and that kind of falls in the next thing where uh, when I started doing the 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 uh, your your leg or your your daily dose of Lego space, and you know I was just doing the classic sets and working through, and I knew I was going to hit through the the classic sets, and then I, I I threw it out to a couple of groups and saying, hey, should I keep going? Should I do Futron and go up and th- and I got the outpouring of like, dude, you're you're making you're 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 that one little moment out of the day where I'm like, oh, there's my classic space moment for the day. And it, it and I it love those posts, man. It, it kind of <laughs> justified 
it justified that not just am I excited about displaying this set from when I was a kid that I didn't have, that I now have, there are other people out there who are just as much like, oh, thank you for showing that because in part of my mind, it's like, well, you can just go to brick set and flip through all the instructions and see these same things. But it's a completely different experience when it's somebody else who's posted it. They're taking the time and the attention to, to, to showcase that set and they're appreciating it. And, and that made me feel like, you know what, if I get one comment like that, oh, you know, every 30 pictures I post, it makes me keep doing it. Well, because, and I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, what you're doing with that is what all of us old men want. It's regularity. So thank you for every day bringing that picture <laughs> to so the internet. Right we'll be here all week. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I tell you what, I think maybe bottom line for me is if you're taking your picture of your Lego and what's in the picture is the same thing you're wanting to do with your dinner and show off what you're eating, then that's a turn off. You know what I'm saying? If you want to, you're just doing the, Hey, I'm having couscous and or whatever, and that's what you're trying to get out to everybody. Then you know I'm done. But if you are really <laughs> wanting to show your passion and what you yeah. creatively put out, um, if you take a Lego made set and do something creative with it, or let me see what it's like, that's great. Um, and but if you're if you're being creative and you're putting it out there, um, uh, take a little time to make a good photo, but. I want to see the brick. I want to see your creativity. And that's what I want to communicate through mine. And whether you get attention or not, I don't care whether I get attention or not. I don't care. I do care if my friends, you know, like it and everything. So, uh, you know, that's what, if that's your goal, go get it. And, uh, but make sure what you're doing is more than just wanting to take a fancy picture and your fancy picture is what gets the likes. The creative thing in the picture is what needs to, to be the focus of it. So, all right. Any last comments? That's that's my my wrap up of the thing, I guess. Any anything else you guys want to? Oh yeah, show? yeah. I, think I want to make sure everyone knows that I'm here for the Lego family, uh, and, and not the cloud. Cloud is the word you were looking for. <laughs> I want I want everybody to know the next time I couscous, I am totally sending a picture to Chris. Please do. <laughs> build, build build a Lego plate for it. <laughs> the one thing I want to say is that. When you said that there was either stickers or pins of the of the uh, of the uh, of face. The face of the cartoon face there, Julian, what I think is you should cut those out of steel, <laughs> and so they should be batarangs for your future crime fighting. That's all <laughs> I want to see. That's <laughs> there is there now there the cre in twenty sixteen the creation at Philly Brickfest of Super Brick Smith is a real thing. So just saying. <laughs> but everybody's not me. I'm just Brick Smith. <laughs> and, and, so, and the last thing I got to say, and I think we kind of alluded to this, is that lighting, lighting, lighting. That's all you need. <laughs> That's really yeah. it. Make sure you got good lighting. And we're also saying, Magnus, get a new phone. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm convinced that my friends uh, have some sort of secret, like, What's it called? Like a poll where they're all kind of guessing, like what year will Magnus get a smartphone? Or, or what Ooh, you there might be money on that. Let's yeah, there could be a lot of money on like get a smartphone in twenty twenty two or twenty thirty two or not. Like I, I, I don't know. There could be a lot of money going on there. <laughs> that phone is like it's like the cellular net that they say you know if you're over sixty five and part of ARP <laughs> and you can't see the buttons, get this. <laughs> the doom bug. I thought there wasn't any more analog phones left. Okay. Cool. Actually, the best comment was from Brahm about that. He goes, You got that five years ago? Where did you get that five years ago? <laughs> <laughs> Never get rid of that phone, man. It's, it's like your badge. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you, can't, you can't get rid of that phone now. So, All right. So hey, we're at a minute. Go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. No, Matt, we're no, done. We'll wrap up. We'll wrap up. I'll share it in the no, you won't. <laughs> secret app. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so anticlimactic. That's awesome. All right. Thank y'all for, for joining <laughs> me. Man, if, if we're hoping that in uh, 2021 we'll get back to being in person at shows, but I guess one of the best things about the pandemic and stuff is we've gotten to do this. 
And we get to do it every week because this is what we do at the show, sitting behind the table, uh, busting on each other, hanging out. And uh, so that's a good thing. And I hope it won't uh, ever. <laughs> Does that phone take double? <laughs> <laughs> Can, uh, can you can ask the magazine on phone, that phone? So. What was that? <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next place. While, while we're showing our lack of technology, let's just say goodbye. You, Have a good night, everybody. You <laughs> uh, see y'all later. Bye. Have a great night. Bye. <laughs> Bye, <boy. laughs>